one weekend, we show up on Sunday, there's only like one pastor standing, everyone wow. else is gone. Uh, it was in the newspaper, tons of crimes that were committed. Was it kind of like that whole thing that's taking place in Philadelphia right now with the Catholic Church? You know, it's very similar, yes. And there was even other issues on top of that. It was like, it was like a whole explosion of things happened at once. You know, atheistic evolution concepts just seemed to make more sense at that exact moment in life. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin and you are watching That Christian Vlogger. Today's episode is a very special one. I got my friend here, Anthony Baca, someone I've known for now almost 10 years, yeah. getting close yeah. to that. Yeah. Uh, and today we're gonna be talking a little bit about his story from uh, going from atheist to Christian. So Anthony, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm yes. really excited to, to chat. Glad to be here. Yeah, so at that time in my life, I just uh, cared about one thing and that was becoming a professional race car driver. I okay. just wanted to be a number one drifter. Uh -huh. uh, me and my friends, we lived life for that. Every paycheck went to that. In fact, um, the reason why I didn't have a girlfriend at that time was because I, my car was my girlfriend. You even had a name for your girlfriend. That's right. Her name is Maboroshi. Maboroshi. Maboroshi that's right. And into all that whole like uh, Asian drifting. Very, scene. very much so. Yeah, yeah. And you know, girlfriends take two things: time and money. Yeah. My car took all of that, so there was no room, nothing left for anyone else. That's the way that that worked. Yeah. So at the time, I was an atheist. Uh -huh. I didn't believe in God for many, many years, mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't have any bias or anything spiritual. Just money, racing, having fun. I was actually raised in a secular home, mm -hmm. non-practicing secular home, and mm -hmm. so because of that, there definitely wasn't a bent up for my upbringing towards spirituality. However, I did go to church for a couple years. Okay. Yeah, my parents uh, converted to uh, Christianity um, mm -hmm. and went to church for a couple years, so I was forced to go to Sunday school, uh, and I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. What, what did you not like about it? I couldn't watch my cartoons. <laughs> so I grew up in a home that was like that. Like on, when the weekend come, when it was time to go to church, yeah. like all the fun had to stop. For exactly. Like Twenty-four hours. Yeah. And, uh, that was tough going. Up. Yeah, yeah, it was. So, but then what happened was um, we had a situation at our church, kind of okay. a bad situation. I was just going into junior high around this time, mm -hmm. and uh, all the elders got, got arrested. Inclu Ooh. Yeah, um, deacons, elders, like complete one weekend. We show up on Sunday. There's only like one pastor standing. Everyone wow. else is gone. Uh, it was in the newspaper, tons of crimes that were committed. Was it kind of like that whole thing that's taking place in Philadelphia right now with the Catholic Church? You know, it's very similar, yes. Yes, wow. very similar to that. And there was even other issues on top of that. It was like, com it was like a whole explosion of things happened at Person. once. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I saw this take place. You know, I would say if I saw that from a distance or if I experienced it, like rejecting Christianity, rejecting the church is a very reasonable thing to do. Yeah, because well, my, my thought process was simple. If people act like animals, it's probably because they came from animals. <laughs> and therefore, uh, you know, atheistic evolution concepts just seem to make more sense at that exact moment in life. For sure. Uh, so, and so, so you I had this kind of train of thought for, for roughly how many years now? Uh, up, to, up to the point of your switching back, right, as it were? Um, I would say about 10 years. 10 years. So, 10 so, years. so you, were, you were no longer a child. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were heading in a different season of your life. Yep. Uh, ultimately, I want to know kind of what are some of the things that happened like, as, that we can learn from, give tips to, to our viewers right now. But mm -hmm. uh, what was, if, was there one specific experience? What was the buildup to you being open to considering things differently? It's a pretty long story, but I'll try to okay. summarize it for you. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a guy by the name of Genesis, uh, kind of funny, you know, first book of the Bible, right? Anyways, he was an old high school buddy. I didn't like him that very much, though. Or I guess you'd say he was a junior high buddy. He was a Christian. Yeah. And so in high school, we kind of started drifting apart a little bit. Did you guys clash because of that difference of beliefs? There was definitely a lot of tension because of that, because he kept trying to witness to me, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't like it. What, what, was it. what were the things that he did that you did not like? Uh, oh, he talked about spiritual things. Yeah. He, he would invite me to church all the time. And there was things like that, that at, the, at the moment, because I was like fresh out of the church in junior high, going into high school, especially, like it was not what I wanted to hear. And that was something I think that was key is, you know, I had communicated that I don't want to, you know, we don't want to hear that information. Yeah. Um, it's probably not best to always share that information. Yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm actually a big believer that you, you and I, just for our, our viewers, a little mm -hmm. bit of context, you and I come from a perspective of, spreading the gospel. We actually went to the same Bible college yeah, together. Yeah, that's correct. Uh -huh. We've served in ministry uh, had, you know, side by side many, many times. We're actually at a conference right now that's all about how to share your faith and things that's like right. that. So um, like we are very excited about that. And while that's the case, I still believe that for the vast majority of cases when it comes to trying to witness to uh, a secular minded person, mm -hmm. the best thing that you could do is actually to not try and share your faith mm -hmm. and simply mm -hmm. to be 
their friend. Uh, like, you know, Jesus talks about there's a parable of sowing seed, and there's the good soil, there's the rocky uh, soil, yes. there's different kinds of soils. And a lot of, I think a lot of time we spend so much time trying to cultivate soil, I'm saying that proverbially, mm. that is not ready. And we mm. try and force it in, and as a result, we do a lot of damage. Mm. Do you agree or disagree? I definitely would agree with that, actually. I think that there is a, there, there's a better approach than just... Uh, trying to Bible thump people into Christianity. Boom. That's, that's, that's what I, my experience. Yeah, the way I figure it is like no one has ever been won to the kingdom of God through fear, ridicule, and guilt. And I would even say not, not many have been even won through debate. Yeah. You know, it's not so much the intellectual alone that's really the issue. That's what I've come to experience. So, so maybe perhaps one of the lessons that we could take from this up to this point is be, being pr prayerful and being observant. Is this the time that God is giving me the ability to impact this person in this way? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, to trust that God's got a plan and mm -hmm. to allow that to kind of be put on the back burner and to focus on something else. What was the something else that Genesis maybe started to focus on later on? So well, what happened was after high school, we just went our separate ways. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we actually p split apart for quite some, for a couple of years. And then at a boba cafe... We bumped back into each other with a bunch of high school buddies all getting together, and oh, he nice. happened to be there. And it was because of his car, because I had I was into racing and drifting, and I had lost my car. Maboroshi died, actually. Oh, no. I, to, I hit car her. Car accident? Uh, no, brick wall, 40 miles an hour head on. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that kind of thing happens when you, you uh, live a little recklessly. Huh? Yeah, it does. And so, <laughs> uh, but he had the same make and model, oh. and uh, I, just, I saw that, and we decided to hang out again, and I didn't really want to be his friend. I just wanted to use his car. <laughs> and uh, he actually, though, I, I learned this later, he had been praying for me for about a year. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so that whole little bit of advice we just gave. There it is. Yeah, wow. yeah you know, I mean, he, he had a burden for me, and I think he realized that, you know, just calling me out of the blue and inviting me to church wasn't going to work. It's, it but wasn't working, historically. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, so, but he prayed. That's Every awesome. single day he prayed for me by name, and God gave him an opportunity later on in life yeah. to kind of capitalize. We hear this a lot at church, that, oh, the best thing and the most important thing that you could do for someone is to pray for them, and then mm -hmm. we quickly just kind of dismiss it, like, oh, yeah, 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 we've heard that a million times. Yeah. Give me the good stuff. So, so I've heard that a million times, now give me the good stuff. What, what, what are some of the actual things that we could do after we've spent a year praying for yeah. someone? So then what happened was he came back into my life and actually just spent time with me. And here's the cool part. We would go racing together, we'd go out to lunch together, hang out together. I'd show him how to work on cars, I showed him how to drift, which he almost killed me when I when I gave him a try at it. So you, you didn't learn from the brick wall. You know, I, you, you, once a car enthusiast, always a car <laughs> enthusiast. Um, and so he literally, if I can summarize it, he became a good friend. And during that few months transition and we were hanging out a lot, he never once brought up the Bible. Wow. And that was much different than what maybe would have happened beforehand. Yeah. And so God then had worked it out to where I was the one who eventually brought it up one day. I, see, that, that is so awesome. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. Like, I haven't actually talked this through with you, so mm. I didn't know where this is going or whatever. Yeah. But I've done a video on how to share your faith, and I actually got a lot of flack for it. Mm. People were kind of like saying, Justin, like, that's not, that's not actually how you should do it, or that's not even a good method. My method was literally stop trying to ber berate people with the gospel. Just live a good Christian life. Be friends with people. And if God is moving in their life, they'll ultimately begin to ask you questions mm -hmm. because they see there's something different in you. Mm. Uh, maybe it's, it's the happiness. Maybe it's just purpose. Maybe it's just the overwhelming sense that the Spirit is working in their life, whether they would use that language or not. Yeah. Was there something that you saw? What, like, why did you bring up that question? So I was watching HBO one day, okay. uh, and you know, like it says in the Bible about Jesus, what good can come out of Nazareth? Uh -huh. You know, I used to, I used to think, think, what good can come out of HBO, right? And okay. It's just entertainment. Anyways, there was a documentary, scientific documentary, where these scientists, for the first time in life, heard scientists give reasons why they believe in God from philosophy and science. Oh. That was kind of interesting. First time I saw it, I thought it was dumb. Yeah. I caught it halfway through, finished it, and I was like, that was dumb. We, we are skipping over a lot of your testimony for the sake of time, yes. but I know part of the insight that you, one of the major reasons why maybe perhaps later on that you retained your atheism was from a sense of intellectual honesty. Yes, yes, that's uh, correct. You, I, you I didn't I, want to believe something that was just a fairy tale or a lie. Yes, indeed. I, I had a, uh, there was a biology teacher in high school that, I, that really befriended me, and he shared with me why he didn't believe in God, and he gave me a lot of, you know, and at that time, good reasons for my mind why I wouldn't be a mm -hmm. Christian or ever believe in God again. So here you are feeling not only is the church wicked and evil from this personal experience that yeah, you had uh -huh. seen, but then also the church and Christianity and all that is just 
utter foolishness and stupid. Exactly. I thought it was a crutch for the weak to get through life. Wow. There yeah. you go. An opium for the masses. I think you got what, it. Uh, was it Nietzsche had said? I'm not sure who said it, but I heard that before. Yeah. Some, some atheist philosopher. Well, two weeks later, it came on again. Okay. And, and so this time? This time, I paid more attention. <laughs> I pulled out my little notepad, and I wrote down their arguments. And I, I, I kind of always loved debates. Yeah. And so I was kind of trying to track their thoughts and their logic. And at the end of it, I definitely wouldn't become a Christian because of it. However, it was the first time that I could say I, re I could respect their decision to believe in God. I don't, I don't, I don't believe their line of thought. Exactly. But they're not so naive as I thought. Exactly, yeah. Like they, they actually had something that sounded somewhat rational, somewhat logical. I, I still felt like they were misunderstanding the information. Sure. However, um, it was the first time when it wasn't just because the Bible says so or because my parents say so. It was I can actually give you something a little bit more tangible That's than awesome. that. And I appreciate it. I could value that. So and it planted the seed. Planted the that seed. was key. Yeah. There, there's a there's a, a person who on the interwebs and uh, on social media talks about that moment in time as putting a pebble in someone's shoe. Hmm. You, you you give them enough to just like make them angry in a good way. They're mm. walking around all day. They've got a pebble in their shoe. Just can't get it out. Yeah. That thing is in your mind rattling around. Mm. What do you do with that? You know. You don't rest. It just bugs you. I remember, you know, I would be at parties and stuff, and I'd be doing my thing, and all of a sudden, like, that, that thing, scenes from that movie would flash into my mind, almost like, annoyingly. Yeah. And then, all of a sudden, Genesis just capitalized on it on accident. Yeah. Yeah, because he didn't, he had no conception, I even saw the movie. Yeah. And, you know, he just invited me out to dinner for my birthday, and he knew I love stars. Love stars. Stars have always been amazing. Love right, going in the mountains, look at stars, look for the Milky Way, all that fun stuff. Yeah. And uh, it took me to look at stars, and there was a whole section uh, the in the movie, in the yeah. documentary, where it dealt, dealt with space. And so I saw that, remembered it, and then that's when I brought it up to Genesis. And so mm -hmm. it's just something that will constantly bug the individual, I think, in the back of their mind until they can figure out a rational way to deal with it. What was, what was the question, actually? I'm kind of curious. So I asked him if he was still Christian, actually, because he hadn't brought it up at all. <laughs> so, he must not have. I mean, he's drifting cars. Yeah, and... he's just hanging out, you know, going, watching some movies together, eating food together. and Just eating, being a normal just guy. Just being a normal guy. Awesome. And uh, so I asked him, yeah, he's still Christian. He said, yeah. And I said, I saw this movie you would like. <laughs> and so I was explaining the movie to him as if I was trying to just give him something beneficial that he might value and appreciate. Yeah. Uh, but then he turned it around and said, well, what did you think about the movie? Uh-oh. And I told him, oh, I thought it was interesting. And then that's when I, you know, uh, Genesis is a very chill, phlegmatic guy. And I think this is key is when you're, when you're connected with God, God will speak through you. Yeah. And I think in this moment, like God spoke through him in a bold way. And he just threw out the challenge. He says, if there was a God, not saying there is, but if there was a God, wouldn't he be theoretically trying to save you? Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's what you guys believe. Sure. He said, if there was a devil, wouldn't he be trying to cause you to be lost? I said, well, if you believe the Bible, sure, which I don't. I was like, but according to your belief, following, yeah, following, following your, your logic, logic. Sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he, he, he just dropped the million-dollar question. When's the last time you saw a movie on HBO that tells you you should believe in God? Yeah. Twice. Yeah. It's a good question. And I don't know what it was about that question, but it just really resonated with my mind. I said, I've never seen anything like that. He says, you know, what if, just what if, there was a God, and what if this was his last chance at trying to reach you? That's awesome. I, I, I love that, that, that approach where it was a question and not me preaching down to you and yes. making you feel bad about yes. something. That's awesome. Now, you, you touched on this earlier. I, I kind of want to go back to it because okay. I think it's such a great point for many of, my, uh, many of the people that are watching right now. And the point is that, you know what, you can be shy. You can be bashful. You can yeah. be the epitome of phlegmatics, yeah. as Genesis is, because Genesis is a mutual friend of ours. I, I know that. I tease Genesis all the time. That he needs to just like work up the courage. Go ask the girl out. Like, yeah. Go do the thing. <laughs> like, just live adventurously. And um, that's definitely not him. He, yeah. he resists that at every turn. And yet, in this moment, God get granted him what he needed that's right. to be able to, 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 to reach you. And so yeah. that's such a, an encouragement for me that, you know, God is in the business of using anyone who's willing. Amen. Amen. So, uh, he asks you that question. I think we kind of need to fast forward a little bit, or at least try and expedite to, yes, to the ultimate yes. point, because we're, we're actually are leading to something. Yes. Uh -huh. He asks you, what, when, when's the last, when was the last time? What happens after that? Well, I mean, then he invites me to church. And I don't know why, but I said, yeah. And so I didn't go for about four weeks, put it off. But eventually I, I showed up at church, and this is probably the most powerful experience um, that got me to keep coming back to church. Yeah. 
it, incidentally, waiting four weeks was probably part of God's plan. Yes. Because the thing that was talked about at church the weekend that you did come mm -hmm. probably would not have been talked about four weeks earlier. It, here's the fascinating part. It wasn't what was talked about. It was what was done. Okay. So I show up to church. Awesome. Uh, I, was a, I was a partier. I drank a lot. So I partied and drank. And I, I woke up that morning not thinking about anything. I just kind of woke up and said, I need to go to church. I said, I'm going to go. I need to go. So I just I got on a motorcycle and I went. I didn't realize that I had passed, I used to party on a Christmas tree farm. Okay. I had passed out on the Christmas tree farm from drinking too much. This is where you woke up that day? I crawled, no, I crawled home through the dirt to my house because I lived right behind the farm. And I rolled into bed. I woke up and went to church just like that. Oh, so you're filthy. I was filthy. I didn't know this. <laughs> so I walk in. There's this sweet Filipino greeter. She gives me a big hug, walks me around, sits me down. And I'm sitting there. They're singing some songs. And all of a sudden, I smell this strong smell, this B.O. smell. It's so disgusting. And then I realized, I thought it was from someone around me. It was me. So here's this 400 pound, yeah, 400 atheist, pounds, yes. covered in dirt, smelly and drunk, yep. wanders and stumbles into church. That's right. And they give you a hug. And they give me a hug. Love it. And I was actually, it's even worse than that. I had vomit on my pants. Oh! I literally had dry vomit on my pants. And I wore all black, so it was painfully that, obvious. That greeter needs to be promoted or given some kind of medal. And, and it was that greeter of what kept this atheist coming back to church. See, on the way out the door, because I, I obviously left. I wasn't going to stick around. So once I realized what I would look like when I kind of sobered up a little, I was gone. The greeter was still waiting at the door. She called me over and gave me the biggest bear hug. She invited me to eat lunch with her, Beautiful. which did not make any sense to me. And all week, every night when I was partying, all I can think about was, why did she hug me? Wow. And that's what kept me going back to church. And I actually never met her again. Really? She was a visitor. Whoa. So I asked the Genesis, we need to find this person. And he, we went to the person who's in charge of that greeting section of the church. Wow. Um, and they said that it was a visitor who's willing to help. They were shorthanded. So they let her greet at a particular door. And that's the door I stumbled in through. Um, and I never saw her again, even though I looked for her. Wow. Yeah. And so that's, that's incredible. It was God's divine timing. For I don't sure. think I've actually heard that part of your testimony before. Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it was. And that's it, why I kept going back. Even to someone who is atheist on moral and like logical uh, grounds, that was an argument that you can't, that was, that was something that you couldn't argue with. That's right. That's right. And so, so there's two pebbles in your shoe now. That's right. Yeah. And so now I'm coming to church. Every, on a week-by-week -week basis, and I really wasn't finding any answers or anything. I was just coming to church, and it was church, you know, they sing songs, and give money, and preach something, and that was it. Um, and then I had a Bible study, my first Bible study, first actual Bible study. Bible in study. over a decade. And yeah, since I, well, actually, it's really my first, even when I was a kid, went to church, they really didn't give us Bible study. In fact, when I was a kid, I asked the pastor for a Bible study in the book of Matthew. He told me no. Oh. He said, that's for adults. You're fired, dude. And I imagine that, you know, this eight-year-old kid coming to you asking for Bible studies and being told, no, that's terrible. it's for adults. Go that's to your terrible. Sunday school. That's terrible. So I'd actually never really had a Bible study. So I actually specifically asked for a Bible study to know what Christians believe. You, you know, there's a, there's a lesson in here. Um, I, f I feel like, this is anecdotally, but I, I feel like it's true because I've heard enough stories like this and I've talked to enough non-believers or former believers hmm. I find that a lot of people who reject Christianity are not actually rejecting true Christianity. They, mm. They're rejecting what they think yes. is Christianity. I agree with that. Not actually being informed on what it is and what its teachings are. That's right. So the study was on Bible prophecy, actually. So the individual sat me down. It's kind of a funny study because I guess you know, Genesis had told him I was an unbeliever, I was an atheist. And so that was kind of his opening wait, wait, statement. Is, it, is this Mikey? Is Mikey. This is Mikey. It's Mikey. Another good friend of ours. Yeah. Okay, cool. So he kind of started that way. It's kind of funny. He's like, yeah, so I, I hear you're, you know, uh, I think he said the word in, uh, infidel or unbeliever <laughs> or something. I don't remember. It was a strong word, though. He communicated that he knew I was, I was not a believer. However, that the Bible had a challenge for me to consider. And that if I was willing to study with him, he'd give me evidence to believe in God. How did you respond to that challenge? Uh, well, you know me, I like debate. So I was oh like, God, yeah, let's, let's do it. I said, what do I got to lose? I'm ready to come into church and I'm an atheist. So uh, I can't, how much weirder can it get, right? Um, my first two Bible verses I ever read for myself were Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. What says? Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Big claim, right? Yeah. And his evidence was because I declare the end from the beginning. From the beginning. The Bible says that the way that you will know that I am who I claim to be mm -hmm. is because I can tell the future. Exactly. Yeah. And so in this study, you talk about uh, prophecy. Prophecy, yeah, specifically of Daniel chapter 2. We study that prophecy. 
And it was a mind-blowing prophecy. Uh, as, we, as we went through and I saw the evidence of how God predicted things before they happened, and I went and researched it for myself. Went uh, to, to, to was, was Google a thing at that point? You know, life, was it, was it definitely the wasn't. It was, it was like Yahoo, bro. It was, it, was, Yahoo. it was like Yahoo, I think it was. Some of you guys so, are too young to even remember Yeah, Yahoo. this is when you had to use AOL dial-up you know, to get I, on. I was watching a, a video on YouTube, and someone referenced Ask Jeeves. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, Ask I do Jeeves remember that. I, I do remember that. that. in like 10 years. That is, that is a throwback. So we're not going to go in this video. We're not going to dive deeper into really what the content of that prophecy was, because the whole point of this video is to mm. help us learn maybe the approach and some takeaways that we can have for witnessing to atheists. Sounds good. If you want to know more specifically about the content of that prophecy, mm. there will be a private video linked below in the description of this, and, uh, and Anthony and I will sit down and we'll talk about what was it that he had learned and what are the specifics of that prophecy in the book of Daniel that, that convinced you, wow, there is some divine fore foreknowledge mm. uh, in the book of, uh, of Daniel. Okay, so. So that's that. Check the link below. So, but I, I wanna I wanna kind of pull back okay. from the story now. We see this whole arc. Obviously, there's a lot more that's happened. That yeah. was how many years ago? Uh, this was. I just had my 11th birthday as a Christian. So. Congratulations. Yes. Buddy. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot more that happens. We always continue to grow and to learn. There's different things I'm sure that you would add to the argument, but that was enough for you at the very beginning. Yes. I want to pull back from that and I want to say, what are some of the key takeaways, advice that you would give to people here that have non-religious friends, mm. family members? How can you help them be the Genesis or the Mikey yeah. in, in, in your life? You know, honestly, it'd just be a few simple principles. Uh, number one, make sure that you're connected with your God every day. I mean, you know, that's the key, I think, about Genesis. He was connected with God. He spent time with God every day. He was a man of prayer. He was a man who, who had his genuine walk with God. He knew what he believed for himself, which I think is important. We should know for ourselves what we believe um, because it's hard to tell someone what you believe without knowing why you believe it. Right. So that's the first thing. And then number two, to the people in your life. Uh, honestly, be their friend. You know, the Bible says a man who has friends shows himself friendly. Yeah. You know, be friendly, you know, uh, love them, help them, be there for them. A lot of atheists, I've actually had the privilege to lead a lot of atheists to Christ, actually. Amen. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't through debate. <laughs> it wasn't through bashing them with a bunch of information. It was through friendship evangelism, mm -hmm. connecting with them, being there for them, serving them. You know, when, at two in the morning when something happens and they call saying, hey, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. And they're shocked. Like, why would you help in this situation? It's like, hey, I heard you need this. I'll be there. I'll help you. Yeah. Don't have food. Hey, here's some groceries. Mm -hmm. Be there for people. Meet their needs. Help them with things that are practical in their life. And God will use that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best thing you can do. And be ready. Be ready yourself. Because when they do bring it up, yeah, don't be ashamed of the gospel at that point. That's right. You know, if they bring it up, don't back down because yeah. that's God's leading. You know, Genesis could have easily, when I brought it up, said, oh no, he's an atheist. Oh no, I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I don't want to do it. I don't want to talk about it. But, you know, once it, once it does come up in conversation, remember Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. And be willing to share what you believe. Amen. Anthony, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you so much for just being an awesome friend and uh, brother in Christ. I, I really appreciate it. Praise all the Lord. That you've, all that you, you've done and all that God is continuing to do through you. So Amen. keep it up, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right.